All right. I hope everybody is having a great day. Welcome to ACM SIGSOFT uh, Town Hall. I believe Tom is going to be taking over and sharing his screen. Please take it away, Tom. Okay, give me one minute to share my screen. Hi everyone. Hi everyone. Okay, so this is embarrassing. How do how do I share my screen? So Tom, there's a button in the bottom share screen. And oh, share oh, that's okay. Yeah. Yep. That was yeah. That's actually embarrassing. <laughs> If you're going to share any videos, make sure you check those boxes at the bottom. But okay. Uh, no. Yes. Okay. That's great. So welcome to the six of town hall meeting. Um, uh, we have. Um, I briefly want to talk about the agenda, and then I will hand over to Lori to share her screen and present some of the slides um, on the ASE, ESEC, FSE, ICSI joint committee on conferences. So that's going to be the first item on the agenda. And then Max DePenter will give a report on rolling deadlines. I will have a few six soft updates after this. And then we have like an open mic session where you can ask uh, any additional questions or raise any uh, topics that are important to you and we can we can discuss them in the town hall meeting. Um, before I hand over to Laurie, uh, I just wanna make a quick statement about virtual hybrid and physical conferences. So as you, as you all know, we, we basically had only virtual conferences this year. So if you have any feedback on, on what went well with virtual conferences, please let physics of EC know and I'm, I'm pretty confident that most, if not all future conferences will have some virtual component. Um, but also what's next for us as a, as a community is also to figure out how we can effectively run hybrid conferences. Because once things are reopening, we, we wanna have like start having physical conferences again, but we also wanna add this virtual component. And in a way, um, so I think we have by now like some idea of how to to run virtual conferences or getting you're getting there to like uh, having some some good idea, but running a hybrid conference is is going to be more difficult than just running a, a virtual conference because some people are going to be physical in like one location uh, and other people are going to be uh, distributed in a virtual space. Okay, and with that said, I want to hand over to Lori. So if you want to share your screen. So, yeah, okay. All right. Okay, so you can see my screen. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. All right. So, you know, as, as Tom said, um, there, first of all, I'll just say there is a new committee. Um, the new committee is a joint committee of ICSI, ESEC FSC, ASC, um, and really what, what we feel that um, as a community, we need to, to work together to make things um, as beneficial as possible for the community. Um, what, one thing I'll say is, you know, I'm gonna report on results of a survey that we did and people are saying, well, why not ISTA included? Why not this one included? Why not that included? Um, and, and, you know, even to get three conferences to come together and agree on things um, could be considered a miracle. But if we try to get everyone all at the same time, it, it just may not work. And so this new committee has um, the steering committee chair and two other people from each of the three committees and also the ACM chair and the ACM prior chair, the IEEE chair and the IEEE prior chair. 
And, um, you know, I, I, I'll say right away, this committee is just amazing. Like there's, there's no one being territorial. Everyone is really working out for the, great, the good of community. So it's been a, a fabulous experience so far. Um, we're gonna talk about some proposed community changes. And just a caveat is that you may be right um, that there are about a million details that need to be worked out. Once we say yes or no to these proposals, then that's when the real work begins. And, and we know that. Uh, okay. Um, so there was a large survey. Uh, it was advertised through email, advertised through social media. Um, we squeaked it out through SC World as well. So 687 responses. Um, you can see the distribution up at the top. Europeans especially answered the survey, um, North America second, and then from, you know, from there on. Um, and then we also asked like, what is your position? And you could see the majority of the people who answered are faculty second student. And so, you know, represented in this is not as many government and industry people. Um, in each of the three proposals, we do have a goal. So like, what is this committee trying to achieve with this proposal? Um, the first one is um, the goal of distributing the conferences throughout the world such that every region has a major conference each year. And so, you know, this is really what was in the survey. It talked about 21 through 25, but then just the general case of, of you know, where would the conferences go? Um, we, there are some commitments already in place, which is why we're not immediately launching into the plan, even if the community agrees on it. And so in the early years, you know, 21 to 22, you see some of the commitments that are already in place. So this was the question. Um, and so this is the answer or like the responses. And so you can see that, um, you know, 65% of the respondents like the idea um, and 25, 26% don't really care and 9% disagree. Um, some of the overall comments that uh, came out when I digested them, um, first of all, a comment. So, you know, if we're trying to think about like, why are people disagreeing? Okay. So still too many conferences in the US and I'll reflect that that's really a shorter term problem. Um, still too many conferences in general. And this is a um, sustainability kind of statement. And um, you know, what I'd like to, you, you to think about is we are considering sustainability in our proposal. What we're trying to say is like, everyone don't try to go to three conferences a year maybe. Um, go to the ones that's closest to you or the two that are closest to you. So we're bringing the conferences to you. Um, some people disagreed and said, we should only have one conference. But if, that, if we only have one conference a year, then that means everyone has to consider going to that one place. So, so we actually are thinking about sustainability. Um, an apology, a public apology that um, some people really did feel because it's like, you know, the, the proposal is North America, Europe and other, and people in the other felt just downplayed and dismissed. And I apologize, that, that, was, that was really not what was intended. Um, some people wanna go to just have virtual conferences from the sustainability standpoint. And, you know, Tom had already sort of addressed the hybrid, you know, that's, you know, we have a strategy going forward to be able to um, keep the, you know, the registration fees affordable and uh, to, have virtual um, possibilities in a hybrid conference. Um, and another thing is like some questions about like where do the conferences go? Like how, do, how are they chosen? So a little bit of um, not knowing that. And so I, I'll speak for ICSI anyway, that we have a call for proposal. So if you feel like, yes, I wanna host a conference, um, then you know, talk to the steering committee of that conference. Um, it's, it's not really enough to say we should have a conference in South America because someone has to actually propose it and be willing to run it. And then, so if you are, then um, talk to one of the conferences. Um, second community goal is um, to create a regular conference schedule. And this is really a reaction to like, you know, the ESEC, FSC, ASC, you know, the schedule going back and forth and 
Um, and so we thought it would be a good idea to just like have the conference schedule um, and, and everyone knows you know, which conference is when. And so here are the proposals. Um, and you know, we did talk about this a lot, um, you know, about, you know, so this is a spread from April through November, um, as opposed to the whole 12 month calendar which, you know, th this is a reaction and then I can talk about the schedule a little bit. So people's reaction to that proposal, 68% um, like it, 22% don't really care, 10% or not, you know, dislike it. Um, and so why might they dislike it? So one is just a general feeling that it screws over the colleagues in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, good to avoid July as a whole. Um, some, there are more comments just on there are too many conferences. So that may have driven some of the negative feelings. Um, some suggestions to put ICSI in particular in a non-teaching slot that April and early May is a bad part of the semester, which is when it's proposed to be. Um, spread them out more. So have conferences every four months. Um, and then that ESIC FSC is too close to ICSI. So those, those were the general comments. Um, I'll go through the last part and you know, then we can open it up. Um, the last one is the community goal is to provide the ability for authors to have a major or minor revision um, with review or continuity within a conference um, and to improve the quality of the papers. And so like, this is the text of what was in the survey. Um, and there are some proposed deadlines here for each of the conferences having an early paper deadline um, and then you might get a major revision um, and then you'll have the ability to revise that for the main paper deadline. Um, so, and, and um, you know, we will, Max will be talking about the just overall philosophy of rolling deadlines, which some other communities are doing. But anyway, that was the proposal. What do people say? Not as much support for this one as the others. So 60% like it, 20% neutral, and you know, almost a full 20% dislike it. So some of the, com the comments, um, you know, uh, probably the most prevalent comment is that um, are the conferences becoming journal? What's the difference between conferences and journals, particularly the Journal First program? Um, that there will be a higher reviewer load. Um, they want more deadlines, more revision cycles, um, desire review or continuity, um, and we'd still like to have rebuttal. So in the in the text there, it does say that we would take the rebuttal periods out in order to get make everything work. Some would still like a rebuttal. Um, and then some would like the possibility of, or think we should submit old reviews. So say it gets rejected to ICSI and you're gonna submit it to FSE to submit your old reviews in order to have a view of what other reviewers said. So that's the end of my slides. Um, and there's maybe a little bit of time for um, some open questions and, and two things. One is um, I do have in the link, if you haven't taken the survey yet, there's a link in there, you can take the survey. Also, I just opened up a new form that says like, give us your feedback. And so you can, you can go to either of those two places. But um, anyway, so um, open, there's not that many questions in the chat. Um, it'd be great to get some reactions. I'm open to giving up the mic to people who would like to speak as well. Okay, Martin, you raised your hand. Yeah, thank you, Lori, for the presentation. There's something that um, just occurred to me. Uh, I, I should admit that I took the survey, so I have a little bit of the history there. But um, isn't there a concern that having three conferences in three different regions and with the assumption that people go to the conference in their region is going to create some sort of silo effect, which is basically what we're trying to eliminate with conferences in the first place? It's a good question. Um, you know, and, and something that, I mean, I, I won't say we have the answer to that. I mean, I, I think that some people will go to more than just their own, um, but they have the ability to just go to their own. Um, I, I don't think that we think that it'll be, they'll, the conferences will become regional, but it's a good thing for us to consider. So I appreciate that point.
other other comments? Let me see what's going on. Um, so, you know, another comment that April, early May is teaching time in general. And so that was definitely something that did come out in the survey. And, um, you know, once we get through this town hall, um, this, this joint committee meets monthly, um, as well as this is the season, like all of us would have been having steering committee meetings right now if we were physically located at FSC. And so it's a season for us all to have our own steering committee meetings, like ICSI steering committee meeting is on Monday. So we'll continue to, you know, to get the reaction of the, com the community and to pursue this further. Okay, um, so Paul Ralph says, if the conferences adopt empirical standards, it will solve some of the concerns with two phase review. So that's, that's definitely something to share. Um, Prem, I really like the idea of allowing reviews from one conference to be sent to the next one with the revision. And those are, you know, the types of things I would say are into the details. Like, you know, once we decide, yes, this is so something that community is in favor of, then, then that's when the details start to flow. Yeah, so comments, proceedings and journals, um, and, you know, and so proceedings in journals, you know, is something that we can consider as well. You know, the relationship between the conferences and the journals and the journals and the conferences, something that we need to think about going forward. Anyone else? Okay, so why don't we let Max go then? And okay. like I said, continue to, um, you know, to make comments you know, take the survey if you haven't, comment in that form. Um, and, we, you know, we'll be collecting, continue to collecting. This is, these are big changes for the community. So we want to make sure everyone's heard. All right. Can you, can everybody see my screen? Yep. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, so since Laurie has shown you that uh, uh, software engineering conferences, at least uh, XFCC are uh, introducing a second deadline, I would like to tell you where this uh, started. So this actually started from a, an analysis we started to do in the uh, X steering committee, and then we, uh, we, we thought that it was a good idea, and I will explain why, to uh, enlarge it to at least three uh, other conferences, but uh, maybe it could be adopted also by others. So uh, just for the records, uh, what are the data sources for uh, this analysis? So uh, first of all, it's an analysis of uh, the review and model for the uh, 68 conferences that are on the CS rankings. Then uh, we may or may not agree that those are the, the biggest one, the most important one, but uh, we just said to start somewhere. Uh, also, there is a very nice report about experiences about the rolling deadline in the uh, IEEE Security and Privacy Conference. And finally, uh, I had a conversation with both Eric Borden, which is uh, both in the Security Committee and the Software Engineering uh, Community, so uh, knows both sides of the world, but also with uh, Thorsten Holtz, which is uh, next year program co-chair of uh, IEEE Security and Privacy. So what are all in deadline, I guess many of you know, but for those of you that do not know, is uh, uh, to give the possibility to uh, submit a paper to a conference several times per year, which could be uh, two times, three times, up to 12 times per year. And uh, what happens after the paper is submitted, the paper can be accepted uh, right away, could be rejected, but it can also be subject to revision, uh, more or less like it happens to journals. And then uh, this means that the paper may be resubmitted to the next deadline and uh, with the, the usual cover letter that everybody's uh, doing with, uh, for journal major revision. Uh, however, there, there are limitations uh, in this model in the sense that if you get the paper rejected, of course, you're not going to resubmit uh, randomly the same paper Per year, uh, but uh, if your paper is rejected, you have to wait at least one year uh, if you want to resubmit to the same conference. Then, uh, as Lori said, it's part of the detail how this will be governed across six FSC and AC. If you 
got a rejection in a conference, he wants to resubmit to the other one. Uh, and uh, also it's a detail, uh, the possibility to resubmit it anyway, if you substantially change the paper and you also enclose a response letter with the reduce and everything. Uh, what, why uh, rolling deadline uh, can be useful for uh, the community? So first of all, uh, we believe, but not only us, uh, this was also the perception of the uh, security community that uh, the uh, multiple reviewing cycles, the major revisions tend to improve paper uh, quality and also enact a more constructive uh, reviewing process. So it's not, it's just not yes and no, but uh, if there is something that can be fixed then the paper is actually interesting, as you know from journals, we have this option to revise the paper. And also uh, it gives more flexibility to the authors. I mean, uh, you are not desperately submitting your FAC paper in uh, February or your XC paper in August, where well, by the way, some of us would also like to go in vacation, but not everybody, of course. But you just submit the paper when it's ready. And for now, it, uh, software engineering has, uh, is introducing two opportunities per, uh, per, uh, per conferences for that. Uh, so uh, looking at those 68 conferences, we see using the uh, rolling deadline. So you can see that uh, this is uh, currently done by a minority of the conference, uh, up now 11. Uh, but there are three conferences having a single deadline with major revision. Uh, for instance, O plus flash is uh, using this, uh, this other model. Uh, also, how many deadlines? And uh, this, this was uh, one point that was brought up also in, a, uh, in the survey. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I will go later on, on that. But uh, another point that was also brought up in the survey was uh, why uh, we do not convert conferences in, in journal. And actually, there are communities doing that. Uh, basically, the database community is doing something similar. I know this was also previously discussed in the Software Engineering Steering Committee. But again, this is probably something to uh, bring back to the general discussion. Uh, there are communities like the security community where uh, uh, they have a role in deadline, but those are not attached to journal. So this is basically the model we would like, we would like to propose for software engineering conferences. So uh, something that is detached from journal. So uh, journals like uh, TSC, TOMS, MMC, and others will continue to have their own cycle. They continue to have their journals first. So how many deadlines? This was, as I said, also brought up. Uh, there are conferences you see like uh, uh, Usenix Security, Sigmod, that have two deadlines, which is more or less what we propose. Uh, there are conferences that have uh, three deadlines like CCS. Uh, some conferences, as I said, like VLDB uh, are uh, related to journals and also have uh, three deadlines. Uh, and then uh, there was a special case. This was uh, up uh, for uh, three years, uh, IEEE, IEEE security and privacy, which used to have uh, 12 deadlines, uh, which is actually what many of you asked, or, well, at least some of you asked, but well, it turned out that uh, starting from next year, they no longer have this model. And uh, I talked with the next year program co-chair and say, why are you changing this? This is great for authors. And they say, yes, I totally agree. Authors really found this monthly deadline to be great. It was really exhausting, exhausting the uh, program committee. So program committee were just unable to end, uh, handle such a, a very uh, such a continuous uh, uh, load of uh, review, even if it was more distributed. So that was the reason why they felt that twelve deadlines were a little bit too much. Uh, so, uh, as you can expect, uh, uh, this can be great for uh, us as authors, but on the other hand, it's, uh, uh, it means more commitment for uh, program co chair for sure, but also for PC members, because the PC member uh, should uh, commit for one year of work for a conference and po possibly even more, because some conference also give the option to submit a, a major revision uh, next year if you got a major revision in the last deadline. So it's actually even more than a, one year. Uh, however, uh, I, I had a look at what happens in the security community. There is almost no overlap uh, between uh, program committees of those conferences. So basically, if you agree to serve the uh, 
IEEE Security and Privacy Com uh, Program Committee, then you are not going to serve the orders. Otherwise, it will be it will be just craziness for you. So probably this is also something to think about in in software engineering. Uh, since we are many, there are many people that are ready to ready to help and willing to help. And well, sometimes uh, with many review cycle, uh, people review at every other cycle, not all cycles. This was especially for IEEE security and privacy. Uh, finally, uh, just to let you understand, uh, if you have many deadlines, what will happen and our paper will be distributed. Of course, we don't know uh, what will happen with our proposal with two deadlines because we do not have data. But this is what happened for IEEE security and privacy with the 12 deadlines, uh, where December is the last call uh, to have your paper presented at the next conference in May. So you see that uh, uh, authors start very slow at the beginning of the year, but then they start to submit uh, at half year, like starting from August, they start to submit quite a bit of papers uh, and uh, finally, there is almost an even distribution between November and December. So in our case, uh, we probably expect uh, less submission in the early deadline, more submission in late deadline. Uh, but in general, uh, the early deadline would possibly save some, uh, some load to the, uh, to the late deadline. And uh, uh, as, you, as you probably know, as you have seen from the survey and from uh, Laurie's slide, uh, the model software engineering is proposing is a, is a sort of lightweight model compared to what the others are doing uh, in the sense that uh, we are starting with the fewer deadline, only two. And uh, for the moment, but this is again something to discuss in future, uh, we do not have the revision option for the second deadline. But again, this uh, can change in future, uh, maybe. And that's basically uh, all from uh, from my side. So, questions? Okay. Uh, so Bashar is asking: Consider the composition of PC across conferences. Absolutely, yes. I totally agree. This is something uh, that we should consider. As I said, I, I had a look at those conferences. Uh, in security, they have uh, zero overlap. Maybe I found one person that was serving multiple committees. So we should uh, put some effort on that, uh, definitely. And then there is another conference, allowing reviews from one conference to another. Also suggests that the three conferences cater the same type of work. Uh, this is more or less true. Uh, my view is that uh, at the moment, all only AC as some form of difference is in the sense that not all uh, papers that appear at uh, uh, X and FAC could go to AC. Like if you do a, a large observational empirical study, probably this is not uh, mm -hmm. uh, suitable for AC, but the, the other way, way around is not true. And then uh, there is a, a comment, what are the typical review timeline? in community like database of security when uh, submitting to journals. Uh, so as far as, as far as I know, it's a couple of months, two months. This is from what I, I, I look at it, from what I heard. When does the new model start? So the new model, as Lori said, we start in uh, 2024. Because, and uh, this means that everything we started in that year, also the geographical distribution, the uh, time distribution over the, over the year, because uh, let's say that uh, the teams, the venues and everything uh, uh, are uh, more or less fixed for the next uh, uh, three years, basically. Will the three conferences revise the scope where they have individual flavors. Uh, this is something that has not uh, been discussed. As I said, uh, probably only AC has a sort of special flavor. I, on a, personally, I don't see any difference between X and, FS, and FSC if not, if not the size. I don't know. Maybe some others can also add uh, something on this uh, point, but this is also uh, quite, uh, quite an interesting point. Dirk. 
IBA distribute but uh, over continents fixed the three dates. Too many changes are dangerous. Okay. And yeah, Christian is saying uh, discuss the relationship with uh, journals. Journals have uh, rolling deadlines, and journal paper can be uh, presented at conference. Uh, yes, we are aware about that. Uh, of course, people uh, can decide to submit to journals that the, the journal that will have their own timeline, and they they can of course present. Uh, uh, the paper to conferences, but on the other hand, they can also directly submit uh, uh, submit to the uh, to the conference. And also, Shira Shira has asked a very related question: whether the new model also include publishing proceeding in journal. Again, this has not been discussed, but very likely, since we have so many questions about this relationship with journals, this is, uh, I believe, a strong suggestion to the. Uh, joint committee to the three steering committee to to start a good discussion on this topic because this topic is uh, is clearly emerging from the, from the discussion probably more than any other points that can be uh, let's say easily addressed or uh, a small variant of the of the model. Tom, I don't know okay. if you want to add anything yeah. on those points. Uh, well, I want to add something about three journals. Uh, so, uh, yeah. also, so in a way, like one thing, one uh, constraining factor is that uh, uh, three, like ICSI, ISEC, FSE, and ASE, they are sponsored by different societies, and each of them has the rule, fit their own different rules, and fit various stages in how much they support open access, how much they support conferences publishing as a journal. So that's what makes some of these things more difficult for ICSI and ASE. And at the same time, we also want to try to make it consistent across the three conferences. So that adds some complexity, but it's it's definitely something we're going to look into. Yeah. So um, maybe I show a few six soft slides and then we can keep talking about the conference schedule of the joint committee, or we can raise any additional topics that you you want to talk about? So, okay, now I know where to share my screen. <clears throat> um, and it's this one. Let me know once you can see my screen. We can see Okay, it. perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna have a few slides about what SIGSOFT is. So, <clears throat> um, so SIGSOFT is basically, it's the ACM Special Interest Group on Software Engineering. And it its goal is to improve our ability to engineer software. And it has various strategies by stimulating interaction among practitioners, researchers, and educators, and by fostering the professional development of software engineers, and by representing software engineers to professional legal and political entities. So. There is, uh, so SIGSOFT, it's like, uh, there are about um, close to 2,000 SIGSOFT members. Um, there is like a select uh, elected executive committee. And that's what you see in the middle column of the slide. So I'm currently the SIGSOFT chair. And then I have my vice chair is Elisabetta Dinito. We have several members at large, Robert Dyer, Mariah Mikic, Greg Rothermel, Sebastian Uchitel, and Nino Medivovic, he was the past six software. And then we have several other volunteers who are helping run six softs activities who are listed on the right hand side of the slide. Um, so what does six do to help the software engineering conference uh, community? So one of the many things that six does is running conferences. So this used to be mostly physical conferences, but now it's obviously going to expand into uh, looking for virtual conferences, but also hybrid conferences. Then we have like a tech talk program where you can listen to talks by, by leaders in the community uh, online. And then we have various other community resources, like we provide financial support for different activities. We have uh, different announcement mailing lists and also newsletters. There are many different ways that you can participate in SIGSOFT. And if you're interested in participating in SIGSOFT activities, just please drop me an email. So for example, you could join one of the many SIGSOFT initiatives. 
You could think about giving a tech talk or attending a tech talk. You can submit special projects which you want to organize, which benefit the SIGSOF community. You can write for the SIGSOF newsletter. Uh, you can nominate someone for an award, or you can just just volunteer for SIGSOF or give us your opinion on issues. So actually, by by being part of this town hall meeting, you're actually already participating in SIGSOF. Um, I have two main announcements I want to make. Um, so the next elections, so the elections for the next six soft executive committee are coming up. And if you would like to nominate someone to be a candidate, or if you want to consider running yourself, please reach out to Nino Medivovic, who is the chair of the nomination committee. And please reach out by November 20, because you have to send the, the list of candidates to ACM in early December. Also, I mentioned SIGSOFT awards. Um, like we have, SIGSOFT has a fairly strong award program, and the nominations are also coming up. It's going to be December 15. So uh, I'm showing you like on the slide the different categories of award. So if you know someone who has done some contribution in these spaces, please uh, go ahead and nominate them. It's it's not that much effort to nominate someone, but it greatly benefits. Uh, our community, if you recognize people who, who, who contribute, who make significant contributions to it. And for different types of contribution that Sixsoft recognizes with awards, we have uh, the Distinguished Service Award, we have an Outstanding Research Award, um, and also an Influential Educator Award. So these are basically meant to, to highlight um, contributions with respect to, res to service, research, and education. We have Physics of Impact Paper Award, and actually today in like uh, less than two hours, uh, the Physics of Impact Paper Award from this year will give a presentation at the ESEC FSC conference. And the impact paper is for a paper that is 10 years or older, which was published at a Physics of conference. And then we have several programs to, uh, uh, several awards to support uh, early career researchers, or also PhD students who just submitted the thesis, like we have an outstanding doctoral dissertation award, and the Frank Anger Memorial Award, which provides travel stipends to conferences. And with this, I want to hand over, like I want to open up the floor for any more questions or comments that you want to make. So you can, uh, you can. Uh, raise uh, your your hand in Zoom if you if you want to talk directly, like through through video or audio, or you can also type in chat questions through the chat. So Ayushi is asking why deadlines are distributed in a time span of six months rather than throughout the year. And in, I think in a way, that's what this joint committee between ESEC, FSE, and ICSI and ASE is trying to accomplish, is to, to space out the conferences better, but also um, the submission deadlines. And also once we move to, I think, hybrid, like rolling deadlines, um, we're also going to get the benefit of, of having multiple deadlines throughout the year. So Bashar <clears throat> asks if uh, ACM Sixsoft and TCSE should uh, coordinate more closely, and it's actually something uh, that we started. So I, uh, like the current TCSE chair and I, we have like, uh, right now it's irregular meetings, but it's going to be more regular meetings where we talk about what issues are important for each of the societies and, and how we can coordinate. Um, I've mentioned that there are like some challenges, and these are actually more like on, like on IEEE and ACM level than it is with, uh, with respect to the societies. And yeah, with respect to awards, yeah, I think that's actually a good, good suggestion.
so Dirk Bayer asks if ESEC FSE is 100% ACM or if there's a European association involved. And typically ESEC FSE is 100% ACM. So yeah. the name European is, uh, it's like, uh, it's a historic, uh, it's for historic reason. And it's, uh, I think a more complicated story. But at some point, there used to be two conferences, ESEC um, and FSE, and at some point they merged, and that's how the name came to be. <laughs> so, so James says uh, we can, if you merge conferences, we can have a super conference called ESEC FSE XE ASE. But he puts some complex regular expressions because James like re likes regular expressions. Yeah. Yeah. Just, uh, just, uh, just wanted to add to what uh, Lionel said. In, in, indeed, that this term X one, two, and three, this is more or less what uh, what is coming uh, frequently in those discussions. Uh, as I said before, only uh, maybe only AC is a little bit different, but then those are really XC1, 2, and 3. At the moment, at least, yeah. So Bashar asks if societies provide um, more consistent online conference support. So I think it's, it's def definitely coming. Like there's more resources you can get. Uh, so for example, for Zoom licenses, we got through um, through ACM. Um, ACM has a task force on virtual conferences, um, which puts together like guidance and documents. And it's basically like now it's been one year where lots of people got a lot of experience with virtual conferences. And so now it's being basically shared out. And I think IEEE also has similar, uh, similar committees and similar documentation for the conference organizers. <clears throat> Uh, so the follow up was by Bashar, so that online platforms persist across conferences and Discord channels, for example. So that's an interesting, interesting idea. Um, so yeah, I think that might be coming uh, down the road. Um, Shrita asks if, is there an idea to consider other conferences such as ICSME, ESAM, or specific focused ones to co-locate with ICSI, FSE, and ASE. Um, so I think what's happening over the past few years is that actually some conferences started co-locating co with larger conferences. So for example, Promise uh, has decided to co-locate with FSE this year. And also um, I think ICGSE, which used to be its own dedicated conference, started co-locating with ICSI like two or three years ago. So I think it's something we will see over time. And if you think it's important for one of the conferences to, to co-locate with a bigger conference, my recommendation would be to reach out to the conference organizers of a conference and also to the steering committees of these conferences to really plant the seed um, that they should think about co-location. Uh, so, so one way that Sixsoft is running to some extent is um, it gives the conferences a fair amount of freedom um, so that they, that they have their own autonomy. And that's a little bit different than compared to something like SIGPLAN, which is having like a more, more tighter ship of the conferences. So there was a question from Max. Um, why not yeah. replicate the PL model like uh, proceedings of the ACM, which seems to work out pretty well? Uh, uh, yes. So uh, I, I look into the Uppsala uh, flash model. Uh, if I'm not wrong, they have a single deadline and then they have a major revision. Uh, am I correct, Dirk? Uh, let's say that the uh, the model uh, XFCAC are proposing, in addition to that, also give the option to submit a brand new paper to the second revision, but in that in the, to the second deadline. But in that case, you don't have uh, uh, the benefit of the uh, major revision. As for the journal uh, thing, uh, as Tom said, 
Uh, this is something we we need to discuss, but we have all those complications related to uh, different publisher and uh, different sponsors. So the uh, proceedings of ACM model, it's also one of reasons it's more complicated is because ICSI and ASE are sponsored by IEEE, which means basically the proceedings go every other year mainly to IEEE, digital library first, and then only if they're also published in ACM. And so like doing the proceedings of the ACM model for ESIC FSE, that would be fairly straightforward. Uh, once we do the, the uh, two deadlines that uh, Max mentioned. Um, but uh, for something like ICSI and ASE, it's going to be more difficult to figure out. And that was also one of the reasons why uh, the past, uh, like past ESIC FSE held back is because we also wanted to have some consistency across these three conferences. Okay, uh, there's some discussion on the on on Clouder, which is an amazing tool um, that also John John Bell helped develop. Um, and then um, Lionel made a comment that one important difference with the security and our communities is that we have more than three conferences. There are other more specialized quality conferences. We are more fragmented, having eventually three to four conferences a year where everybody, everybody goes with rolling deadlines and revisions should be the goal, in his opinion. Yeah, and I think that's hopefully something that we that we will see. Like once we once you have ASE, XE, ESEC, FSE all spaced out or XE one, two, three or ABC, um, then it's going to be uh, much easier to also convince other conferences to co-locate and yeah. potentially. Yeah, that, uh, as somebody says, uh, it, will be, it will be nice to have other, the other more specific conferences to be co-located. And uh, yes, this is the way this goal can be achieved. Yeah. OK, and, and also Bajar says that to have smaller support, uh, also support for smaller workshops so that we don't get standard. Yeah, for sure. And so we actually have like uh, something called uh, special projects where we can provide uh, sub financial support for for events that are meant to to do some community building or or of like strate strategic importance for Sixsoft. So for example, some people use this funding to to organize summer schools on on certain topics, or you you could think of uh, applying for a smaller workshop if it's on a really important topic. Oh, I see that Christian has his hand up. Yes, so um, let me first uh, thank the committee for looking into these uh, changes. I think that's, uh, that's a great idea to explore them and I appreciate consulting widely with the community. So following up on this relationship with journals, because I'm, uh, I'm also uh, part of a, a journal editorial board, so I do see this uh, convergence right between journals and conferences and uh, so for instance journals have now uh, distinguished uh, reviewer boards right which are very similar to program committees which are more permanent uh, and uh, obviously you know they do have uh, rolling deadlines and there is also the relationship with journal first where the journal papers can be presented at conferences so I do feel that at this point, my suggestion would be to also involve the um, editors in chief at, uh, in chi at least of uh, the journals that have journal first uh, deals with ECFSC and uh, uh, ESECFSC and uh, ASC, you know, to try to understand, the, uh, you know, in which direction the community should be uh, moving. Because I do have, I do see, I do hear the same kind of discussions in, uh, in a journal context as well. And uh, I feel like, you know, we should have a plan for, uh, for what to do here, right? Rather than try to replicate, uh, you know, duplicate the, the same uh, models. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's a good suggestion. Okay, I wanna give uh, Jonathan Bell a few moments to say something about the Clouder tool. Um, yeah, thanks, Tom. 
So um, I thought I would just answer a few questions, virtual conference stuff. This is a space that I've kind of gotten into starting with ICSI, with Krista Lopes and with Benjamin Pierce, trying to like bring some consistency and organization to all of the like immense amount of volunteer work that seems to be going into like every single conference to make some like best practice open source project that everyone can use. Um, this is something that we now have a company to try to provide like support. So if you don't want to run the entire thing yourself and have money from registrations, hopefully there will be some way that doesn't involve like terrible conflicts of interest with Krista Benjamin and I that like you don't have to do it yourself and instead we have developers who can do it. Um, but open source projects, very interested in like sharing things, um, maybe rather than have like extended discussion now, anyone who's interested in talking about virtual conference stuff, I'm happy to be on Discord for like the next, you know, 45 minutes or so. Um, maybe we can meet in the meetup channel and then make a, a separate uh, casual conversation voice room. Awesome, and David will be there too, fantastic. Okay, so one question, so, so thanks, uh, John. Uh, and also, thank you so much for, for building the Cloud tool, because lots of uh, software engineering conferences, MPI conferences, really benefited from it a lot. And uh, yeah, so huge thank you. Um, like there was one question about the, if there are any updates on the status of open access for conference proceedings. Um, so, uh, so basically, a few things happened since 2019. Uh, so. ACM announced that we are going to be fully open access within the next, I think it was the next five, five years or seven years. Um, so basically what ACM is moving towards is that right, right now a lot of universities and institutions have like subscriptions to the digital libraries where they just pay to read the digital library. But going forward, what ACM is moving to is that they are going to a subscription model that includes reading for papers being published, but also publishing papers as open access. And so they're right now trying, they're now signing up different universities um, for these so called publish and read agreements. Um, and basically, it means that I think. Uh, I think some of University of California is part of the agreements already or is going to be part of it soon. So it means basically every author from University of California can publish um, for free an uh, open access paper in the digital library because it's paid through the university subscription to the digital library. And so, so ACM is basically trying to increase the number of these publish and sheet agreements over the next few years. And at some point, they will put, pull the switch and make all of the digital library open access. And so at that point, all of the conferences will be open, open access. Um, so for, for software engineering conferences, it's basically um, we, um, there are different ways we can address this. So one is we can just wait till ACM just pull the switch for everyone, and that might be a few years. Or we can also try to speed up the progress, the process for for six of conferences. And that's actually something. So it's like an ICSI task force which is looking into open access. Um, in the context of ICSI, it's a bit more complicated because again we have to find a solution that IEEE keeps happy. But there's also similar uh, initiatives for for ESIC FSE. So the ESIC FSE task like the ICSI task force has several people who are also on ESEC FSC steering committee. So I hope that we have like in one or two more years, we, we should be able to, to, um, to go open access to some extent. So uh, Bashar mentioned that it's important not to exclude poor universities. And that's actually, uh, I think one of the challenges with this publish and read agreement because it's very much, uh, I think there's a really strong incentive for the top research universities uh, or research research institutions to, to do these uh, publish and read agreements. But if you like at a smaller university, uh, you, um, 
you might not benefit from a published NG agreement because your university just doesn't see the value of potentially paying more for published and read. Um, and also you have developing countries. So I think for developing countries, ACM has some exceptions. Um, but uh, the other thing we've done for SIGSOFT is we, so we put some budget, put something in the budget to, to basically support open access initiatives. And so, so one idea that has been floating around is basically similar to how we have the CAPS program to support travel to conferences, we would have like a CAPS program to support open access for authors who just cannot afford to, to pay any publication fees that might be related to, to open access. And that's similar to like um, the SIG plan community, basically what they do is that if authors have funding to pay the open access fees, the authors should pay the open access fees. But if, a, if an author cannot afford it's basically a sick plan which picks up a view. So yeah. Any any more questions? Um, Dick is a, Dick is writing ACM compute some statistics on how many papers go published in the past by people from the department and the fee is proportional. Uh, I, maybe I can give some more details. Um, so here is, I, I'm going to paste a link to the ACM, uh, subscription model is, so this page is really meant more for the. Uh, um, that's, uh, I have to post everyone. That's really something which is post, which is meant to, for the libraries, um, for people who pay for the library licenses. Uh, but basically um, what we've seen is, so I think the last time we checked, there was about 10 to 15% of the offers of the major six of conferences, they already qualified for open access publications at no extra cost because the universities were part of the initial uh, publishing sheet agreements. So I think over time it's only going to increase. Any more questions? So you have like one minute. So you, now is more or less your, I mean, you can also run over if you have really good questions. But if not, we can also move over to Discord and talk about virtual conferences in the channel that is has just been set up. Okay, so thank you so much. And yeah, sorry. Let's head over to uh, to Discord.